Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Wealth Architect Podcast. I am so glad you're here. I have some special guests today. We're going to be talking about financial stuff. We're going to be talking about, uh, you know, acumen and assessments and really some fun stuff to see if you have the personality to even be a good investor or a good manager of your own money. Hey, it's Mark Yegi, wealth architect, author, and founder of Light Circle. Wealth isn't just about money, it's about balanced abundance in your health, your wealth, your relationships, and your soul. Let's take your life to the next level and build your dreams into reality. Welcome to the Wealth Architect Podcast. So I'm going to introduce three guests today. Dr. Robert Rome is a popular keynote speaker. He's an author, corporate trainer, recognized for his expertise in team building and in human behavior. He's a best-selling author, and he's wrote over 20 books. Over 2 million people have experienced Dr. Rome in live presentations, and he is an expert in the DISC assessment. Our next guest is also Gary Arblaster. He is a financial keynote speaker and leadership trainer. His Make It Personal keynote messages and trainings teach audiences how to empower their own improvement through self-assessing. Now, he not only unpacks how understanding yourself can improve relationships, communication, finances at home, but how providing personal growth and training in the corporate setting can impact the entire team's ability to communicate and connect to achieve peak performance. And finally, our third guest is Patrick Pettibon. He is the Vice President of Personality Insights and the co-founder of DiscoveryReport.com. He has a degree in electrical engineering. And get this, he's happily married with 11 children. So here we go. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Good to be here, Mark. Can't Hi, wait Mark. to get into this. This is so cool because, listen, I have some experience in something called the DISC model, which I know you are all experts on, and that makes me less of an expert unless you're not mm-hmm. on this call, and then I can I can be the expert. But I can't wait to learn about it because I find that assessments are an incredible tool for finding out your personality, finding out what works for you and finding out how you can deal with other people. There's things like Myers-Briggs and and several other assessments. And I know you guys have something you're going to be uh, revealing here on the podcast as well. But let's start with you, Dr. Rome. Let's talk about uh, your background and how we got here. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. Actually, in uh, June of 1991, I started Personality Insights. I had been working with the personality information for about five or six years, primarily within my own family and within my own circles. And I saw relationships change. I saw walls coming down. Mm -hmm. I saw bridges being built. And all of a sudden, I just began to think to myself, this is so fabulous and it's so helpful. Why don't I share it with somebody? So uh, I had a few speaking engagements and I shared it. And it just, it was like pouring gasoline on a fire. It just took off. And the next thing I knew, I had 23 speaking engagements. And then I thought, I wonder if I can do this full time. And I jumped into the world of motivational speaking, personal growth and development in June of 1991. And I've never looked back. And so what we do is is I noticed in teaching the DISC model of human behavior several things. First, it has a lot to do with relationships. And then the next thing it kind of taken, that's a broad topic to, well, how about marriage? That's a relationship. How about parenting? That's a relationship. And then I began to notice one day it was like just scales fell off my eyes. It has a lot to do with the way we handle money. The outgoing personality is a little more of a runner gunner, a little more of a risk taker, a little more of let's see what happens. And then the reserve types are a little more of, wait a minute. Let's see about this. Let me think about it. I need to understand it a little bit better. I need to get a little more information, have a little more data. And even after all that, I'm still a little bit hesitant to do anything. Well, to make a long story short, during the last two or three years, our friend Gary Arblaster, who does this full time, and Patrick, who is a technician par excellence, and also the vice president of Personality Insights and the co-founder of Discovery Report, uh, has put have uh, have worked. All of us have worked together to put together a financial uh, disc personality profile assessment, and it's just taking off like wildfire because people are finding out. Wow, you mean I can guide my life and my investing by the way my personality is wired? Because everybody has a personality. 
So that's pretty much how it all got started. I've been excited about this. I think it's something, I know it's something that has been needed. We just needed someone like Gary to bring his 30 plus years of financial um, background into the mix with our personality information and make all this become a reality. Hi, I'm Mark Yegi. Every new year brings hope, but have you ever made those resolutions and by February they're out the window? Yeah, me too. This coming January 13th and 14th, join me at Your Greatest Year. It's an online summit dedicated to setting you on a path to transformation, abundance, and growth. Make your resolutions a reality. Let's create magic together in 2024. Make 2024 your greatest year. To register, go to 2024yourgreatestyear.com. Exciting. Exciting. Well, great. Thanks for thanks for that intro. And, and you know, one of the things that I talk about in my mastermind group, I have a program called the Cash Flow Machine, which teaches people how to make reliable income, but it's in the stock market. And the stock market goes up and it goes down and it has wild swings and it's got personalities like Kramer, you know, that are banging on buttons and telling you to buy, buy, buy or sell, sell, sell. You know, like they're adding even more emotion to it. And what we have to do is remember that they're selling advertising. They're not selling investment advice. And I have the saying, when emotions go up, intelligence goes down and vice versa. And so I think it's really important to understand that emotions play a huge role in our investing. And if you can understand your personality and how maybe apt you are to be reactive to those emotions, I think it's a big advantage that you have. So I, I love what you guys are doing. Gary, maybe you can give us a little bit of background. Tell us what you're doing and, 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 uh, and why it's so important. No, absolutely. And, and thanks for having me on, Mark. Um, I'm really excited about this conversation. And funny, you mentioned the uh, the Kramers of the world. I, I wrote a book called Making Millions and Going Broke. And uh, I dedicated a whole chapter to entertainment advisors. So uh, I think it's a really <laughs> big conversation. But no, I've been in this uh, investment world, this financial planning world for since 1994, uh, June of 1994, actually. And um so over the years, I've, I've, you know, I've been managing money and working with people and businesses, and there's been a common theme, and the common theme was nobody approaches money the same. And about seven years ago, um, long story short, seven years ago, I was introduced to DISC through another gentleman. And when I first uh, took the assessment, I kind of rolled my eyes and said to myself, what's this kind of voodoo science that I'm, I'm dumping into here? And uh, when I got the results, it completely changed my life. It changed. Yeah. Dr. Rome made suggestions to um, on my relationships. I went out and made my whole family take it. Uh, it's just changed everything. But now, what can you it, tell us what DISC stands for, just for the audience that may not be familiar with your test? Yeah, yeah. let me jump in on that. The D is the dominant type. They're outgoing and task-oriented. I is the inspiring type, outgoing and people-oriented. Then the S is the supportive type, reserved and people-oriented. And then the C is the cautious type, reserved and task-oriented. If someone could visualize a circle in their mind with four quadrants, upper left's the D, upper right is the I, lower right in clockwise orders, the S, and lower left is the C, dominant, inspiring, supportive, and cautious. And Everybody has some of all four of those traits to a greater or lesser degree. We just help people to find their comfort zone, to know how to understand themselves and others, to build better teams, have better relationships in all of life. Right. Okay, Gary, sorry to interrupt there, but no, I want no, to support for everybody to understand what DISC actually stood for, that it means something. It doesn't mean throwing a Frisbee. That's Go right. <laughs> and, and the really cool thing about what Dr. Rome just described was that was the piece missing in my financial planning world. You know, I'd, I'd sit and work with people and, it, and the mystery was, why could I have two individuals with relatively the same income, relatively the same expense ratio and all those things, and they have different outcomes? And the bottom line was it ultimately resorted back to how they were wired. So I started implementing without the personality assessment in my in my practice, just some kind of the tools that I've learned as a, as a certified DISC person to help these people understand money differently. And I... Then one day I woke up, I said, why isn't there an assessment that we could utilize in this space? And that's when I contacted the, the Personality Insights folks and, and spoke with Patrick and Dr. Room about this. But the, but the exciting part is in the actual stories that I've come across utilizing this tool. 
And, you know, just to cut, just to share a couple, I was, I was doing a seminar. I was speaking in a large event and I was sitting in the, in the front, of course, doing my thing. And I look in the back and I see this husband and wife, man, they're just going at one another. <laughs> and uh, so I ended the seminar and here they come. I mean, they were making a beeline for me like you wouldn't believe. And I thought, uh oh, what's what's coming at me here? But they got up to me and they started to talk about their situation. They were getting ready to start a business and and their the husband was out there just doing all these things. And, you know, he was just plowing away to get things done. And the woman was sharing how this was scaring her to death. Well, the husband viewed this as if she did not support him, didn't trust him. You know, all these negative connotations come out of that, that insecurity that she had. So I, I asked a bunch of questions and I started leading them down this road of understanding their personalities. And I said to the gentleman, I said, you need to understand what your wife is saying to you, not what necessarily you are hearing. So I started to describe her personality to him and I shared with him, look, your wife is not against anything that you're doing. You just not have in your, you know, explanation and that your acts provided her an avenue to be secure coming alongside of you. And he looked at her and she looked at him and he goes, is this true? And she just kind of went, I've been telling you that forever. <laughs> and it was like an aha moment for that couple to realize that if he would just structure and provide the security that she needed to come alongside of him, that the conversation completely changed, the, the dynamic of their approach to their new business completely changed, their partnership grew together, it completely changed the dynamics of how they approached that business. So, you know, that that's just one of many stories. Uh, real quick, I'll show another one. I got a phone call from, from a mom and I was working with them on finances years ago. And um, she called. She says, we are trying to get our son to do a budget. And I said, OK. She said, we have beat him over the head with this budget. He doesn't want to do it. And she starts going down this road. So I start to ask the questions. You know, and I, I took it back. I said, it sounds like your son likes to have a good time. Oh, he loves to have a good time. I said, was he a class clown? Oh, my goodness. He was a cut up in class. I said, you need to understand based on how his personality is, you're asking him to do something that's extremely detail oriented that he's going to continuously struggle with the rest of his life. So you need to change how you speak to him about the money. I said, your son needs to understand that he can have his fun with his money, but yet also plan properly. And I said, you need to show him how to budget fun into his money. You need to do this and that. And she says, Gary, I've never, ever heard anybody approach money in the manner that she because this is completely going to change our conversation. I spoke to them a few months later. She said it changed everything. He's able to now budget that line item in that budget that actually showed where he can have his fund completely changed his attitude toward money. So that's kind of the, kind of where this is based and where this really is the crux of managing money. And it really is making a difference. I, I love it. And it's true. I mean, just it, some of the stuff you you went through brought up so many things for me. So one of them is men and women barely understand each other, right? Mm -hmm. Let alone understanding the different nuances within the personality types uh, of men and women, and especially when it comes to money, because money is emotionally charged, right? And so money is energy and people work really hard for it. And so I have a feeling, and you may agree with me this, and we'll go to Patrick in a second, but that money magnifies the emotion it does. because there's so much involved in it. And because it's attached to our limbic brains, right? Which is like, oh my God, if I lose my money, I'm going to starve. I'm going to be on the street and all these things that your limbic brain does to make you feel like, it, it's a huge emotional event. I, you know, I've told people about this event that I had several years ago where I wasn't having a very good year in my hedge funds. And I had made the mistake of tying my identity to my performance. Mm -hmm. And it was because of the wiring that money was so important, especially to my clients. And I don't like to lose anybody money. And I was losing sleep and all kinds of stuff. And I realized, look, first of all, don't tie your, your identity to your performance in any job that you do. And then second of all, money can really magnify because people put so much into it. So I'm really, I'm really excited about what you guys are doing as far as uh, assessments and being able to allow people to discern what kind of personalities they have. 
But I, I can tell you, because I put together financial assessments, it's not an easy task. So Patrick, let's go to you and talk about like, what did you have to go through to put this together? I'm sure there were lots of personalities that came into this that you had to kind of figure out where do you put them? Tell us about that. Sure, sure. Well, what is so interesting is that when Gary and I started talking and he was sharing some of these stories, uh, we're both huge believers in understanding personality styles. DISC is super um, established as a very easy, very valid personality model, very easy to understand and scientifically uh, proven reliable. So all that's good. You know, we're huge fans of the DISC model of human behavior. As we were talking some more, Gary introduced a, a fantastic idea, and that is what if we could add a secondary assessment for risk tolerance? And that's really a huge component in mm -hmm. thinking about finances. So it's true that our personality style influences almost everything we do. But another important aspect is, as we put together this financial risk tolerance assessment, it's important to realize that these are two separate things. Yes, there's a lot of correlation in how you are risk tolerant. So for example, if you're a very outgoing person, you're gonna have a tendency to be more open to risk, right? You're, you're, a, you're an outgoing person, you're a go-getter, you just wanna live life and engage life. Okay, great. Uh, however, and of course you could imagine a reserved person tends to be more cautious and they don't wanna take a lot, they're risk averse generally speaking, but not always. And so the risk assessment factored in was really important because as Gary uh, was sharing with me, your risk tolerance is highly dependent on your financial knowledge, past experience. You know, have you been burned before or had a bad experience? That's going to weigh in. Or, yeah. you, you know, you may have other things. You you read the news and some current events throw you off and you think, uh, this isn't a good time to do something. And so all these other factors come in. So we have been able to put together an assessment uh, process which combines both. And yet you get feedback on your financial risk tolerance that's independent. And we've tried to be very creative in the way we've done the verbiage on the feedback where we're, we understand your personality style, but it's a huge thing for someone to understand risk tolerance right alongside it. So. We had fun putting that together. And of course, our DISC assessment's very established. We didn't have to tweak anything there. But Gary and uh, and our team worked together on the risk tolerance assessment, kept it simple, but it's it, it's very uh, it's based on a range, as you can imagine, from conservative to aggressive. Um, but it's very easy to understand. That's That was our overall approach. So I have a question. I'm not exactly sure how to ask it. And it's it kind of can be perceived as a gotcha question. So I'm not sure who wants to take this hot, hot potato. But the question is this. I believe that Wall Street programs us incorrectly, right? They tell us that the safe investment is like a fixed income investment, right? You get your 4%, but you know, bonds are down 50%. So while you were getting your 2 3 and 4% over the last year, a couple of years, you've lost 50% of your investment. It doesn't sound very safe to me. Put your money into CDs. Sounds like it's really safe, but when inflation, when CDs are paying, let's say now they're up to 5%, but they were at 0.5% a couple of years ago, where they're paying 5%, but inflation's really running at 15% because I don't think we're getting the right, we all know what we're paying in, in, in higher prices, but I don't think we're getting the right information from the authorities. I don't think that sounds very safe either. So I'm, I'm I'm giving you a long question and maybe we'll get a shorter answer. I don't know. But how much of the risk component of your assessment is guided, clouded, shaded by the definition of risk that we are taught from Wall Street? Well, I'll run with that because I, th I think it has a lot to do with it. And I think a lot of it also has, has to do with what's perceived, what you hear every day on the on the television and on, on you know different outlets, so that's why this this whole assessment piece you know, a, as a, a whole package is important. And what it's doing is it's raising our awareness, there you go. and it's creating an opportunity for us to say, "Time out a second. I am wired X Y Z, and my tendency is to do this." By taking this assessment, it takes that awareness to a new level, so you can actually pause 
and make better decisions. And that's why this was created. It's not to say you need to go out and buy an aggressive portfolio because you scored a certain level on a risk tolerance today. But it does say, let's take a moment to think about if I'm in a situation where I'm not seeing the results I think I should be getting, I'm going to go out and sell it, irregardless if it's right or wrong. And this assessment actually tells you to, hey, hold on a second. Let's think about this. And it actually justifies a relationship with an advisor, to be honest with you. Because this do you is think, do you think people are gonna act, are gonna actually listen to the results? I mean, I can tell you that it's hard to change people, right? It's even hard when you know that you're doing something wrong to put in a new habit. Do you think that somebody's gonna look at this and go, wow, I'm really conservative? Maybe I need to invest a, a bit more aggressive, or they're gonna go, Wow, I'm really aggressive. I better not be a gunslinger anymore. I better go, you know, into bonds. Do you think it's gonna really change? No, I don't necessarily think it's going to drive people to do things differently. And that's not the goal because okay. I can't sit here and advise people on how to manage their money based on not knowing them. And what I mean by that is a personal relationship. So I don't know your risk tolerances. I don't know your time frames, your objectives. You know, as an advisor, I would never use this as a means to say, this is where we're putting money. This is primarily, though, a tool. And that's all it is, is a tool to help kind of bring an awareness to your money at a different level. So is it going to be a driver of complete change? I, you know, I think if you use it to work with somebody and to, um, to, um, you know, create this, this next level awareness, it might, it might move people, but globally, it's not going to, you know, somebody's not going to take go, Oh, you know what? I need to go into more bonds. Okay, good. It's just, it's another dot on the screen painting the really picture, is. right? So yeah, and it really is. And, and I'm sorry to interrupt. And, and to be honest with you, from an advisor perspective, this takes advising to a whole new level because you now know your client on a different level. Yeah. So if I'm a performance performance guy and, and you know, you know a disc, I'm a D. So I'm a results-oriented guy. So if I'm dealing with a results-oriented client, I know if I start going into the details of why the market's doing this and the standard deviation is X, Y, Z, they're gonna be like <laughs> tuning out saying, okay, I want nothing to do with this conversation. But also, if I have somebody who's a C who requires the details to understand what a standard deviation is, then I need to know, I need to address this stuff or I'm going to lose this client, number one, possibly making the wrong decisions in the market, number two, my relationship. Interesting. Wow. So it's um, it's important to just to know where you are, to know where you start, but it's also no, important to know the background and the mistakes that you might have made. And then you can, with this assessment, you could probably look back and go, wow, I didn't realize that I made this mistake because this is part of my personality trait. And of course, I was going to make this mistake. It was really, um, really interesting. What have I not filled in or what have you not filled in? What are some final thoughts um, you know, maybe Dr. Rome, with all your experience in DISC, have you seen some real uh, tangible change? And are you excited about how this financial part of it is going to is going to work? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm a storyteller. That's what I primarily have learned to do to communicate with people because we remember stories. They're like hooks in our life. I'll never forget. I had a very, very good business advisor. His name was Jeff. Jeff came in my office one day and he and I had been good friends. He was much older than me, very, very successful financially. And Jeff and I had been talking business and I had tried to get some advice and counsel and wisdom from an older, more seasoned businessman than myself. Jeff looked at me and he said, I want to say a word to you and I want you to tell me what it means to you. And I said, okay. He said, the word is budget, budget. And I, I remember sitting there trying to think, and I must have had some kind of horrible look on my face because Jeff said, let me tell you what you're thinking when I say the word budget. <laughs> I said, okay. He said, when I say budget, you see walls and barbed wire and dogs and guards with guns walking around the wall. And I said, yeah, I think that's it. I think I do see that. It feels very dangerous and constraining and uncomfortable. He looked at me because he had been through the personality training that we offer. He had actually been through a two-day training and become one of our consultants. 
He wanted to go through it so he could use it in his own personal business, but I never knew it would come back to help me and bless me in the world of finances. So he's sitting in my office. He said, let me explain, because he understood my personality. I'm an ID personality. He said, let me explain to you what a, a budget is. He said, you ready? And I said, yes. He said, treasure map, treasure map. And I said, what? He said, a budget is a treasure map. We're going to lay this out and we're going to go on an adventure and we're going to have some ups and downs and ins and outs, and we're going to end up finding the treasure. And our budget is nothing more than a map to guide us to help us to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Do you want to go with me? I almost jumped out of my seat. I said, yes. Now, you see everybody's laughing. You see everybody's listening. That changed my attitude. I have a financial advisor. I have a CPA. I have people in my life to help me get to my treasure map. I hate budgets. I don't want to talk about budget. I don't want you to put me into a straitjacket and talk to me about a budget. But if you want to talk to me about an adventure and a treasure map and finding the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I'm all in. And and listen, uh, Mark, you were the one that said it best. Money is a big time emotional factor. Well, there's nothing more emotional than all of our lives than the ups and downs of money. And I want to be on the journey of looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But I can't do that if I'm working with a budget, but I can do it if I'm working with a treasure map. That's what wow. Gary has done. Gary has helped us put this together for every personality style so people can look at this and go, how do I go from where I am to where I need to be and accumulate financial resources on that journey? That's what we've done, and that's how we want to help and bless people. Exciting. It's And it's funny, Doc. It's all in the framing, right? If you frame something to somebody that's receptive, they're receptive. And if you frame something to somebody in a different way, even if it's the same thing, it's not receptive. It's the difference between the jail or the walls and the treasure map. So that's a that's a great example. So listen, I'm, I can't wait. Uh, where do people go to find this, find more about you? Uh, take this assessment. I think this is an important part of the next chapter of people's financial journey. Patrick, he'll explain that for everybody now. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Um, the easiest way to find this resource would be to go to personalityinsights.com. And then we have uh, disc assessments that are featured. And if you just look for the financial disc assessments and use a coupon, we'll have a coupon there for Mark will be the coupon. And the first 50 people that use the coupon are going to get a discount. We are setting that up now. So, but once the coupon's used, it's gone. So once it's used 50 times, the first 50 people will be able to access it. And we have two versions, by the way. We have a concise version and we have an extended version. They both have great feedback. It's uh, mainly that the extended version gives you more feedback on the risk tolerance aspect of it and some more reference material, which is very useful. The concise version is 10 pages of feedback and the extended version is 40 pages of feedback. Wow. But um, one thing that wasn't mentioned is just as an example, in both reports, you're gonna learn about your financial strengths. And for a lot of people, they've never been told about their strengths. And all of a sudden they're gonna hear in in easy to understand language areas that they're strong in. And that is so encouraging and people need encouragement. They're also gonna hear about possible blind spots and how to address those possible blind spots. And that's also very helpful. So it's just the language in here that's gonna give you a whole new way to have a way of expressing how you think and how you feel about finances based on what you read about yourself. So at personalityinsights.com, use the coupon code MARK. And if you you can also just type in the word financial in the search box as an easy way to find the reports. Wow. Amazing, gentlemen. So thank you so much for being on here. I think this is actually world changing in a lot of ways. I could tell you on a personal level, when I took my first disc assessment, it changed the way I saw things. So um, and now being in finance and, and doing a lot of things around money and wealth. 
uh, I could see the same thing. So thank you, the three of you, for being on here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I can't wait to see where this goes. So keep me posted. And for everybody else listening and watching, thank you for being part of the Wealth Architect podcast. Remember what I always say, never give up your power in your health, your wealth, or your time. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time on the Wealth Architect podcast. You've been listening to the Wealth Architect podcast with Mark Yegi. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Share and tell your friends. See you soon.